Good morning and welcome to day six of the 14-day mindfulness challenge. My name is Julian Jenkins and thank you for joining me again today. Um, before we do all of this, we have a little bit of a uh, of an update in my house. Thank you to everybody who has um, offered healing and help and love um, to my family. Um, my wife today is feeling a lot better. So thank you very much for all the, the healing that's been sent. If I consider yesterday, I had to virtually hold um, her Ventolin pump, a serotide pump in her mouth to be able to take um, her, her her medicine. And today she's up, she's downstairs in the kitchen um, reading a book and having a cup of tea. And I know she's getting better because she's nagging in my ear. And I know that's a sign that, um, that things are on the up for her and obviously on the down for me. But hey-ho, that's married life. Um, welcome to day six. And today um, I'm going to talk about, we're going to go back to a loving kindness meditation, the one we've done previously. I hope the body scan you know, helped you to um, check in with yourself and probably the first time ever, or if not, um, certainly for a while. And we were starting to look at how we've um, put some repressed emotions all the way through our body. Today we're going to talk about stress. And the reason we're going to talk about stress today is because a lot of people are getting stressed. A lot of people are stressed anyway. So if we took um, to one side the events of the last three weeks, four weeks, however long it's been, and actually had a moment of um, uh, honesty with each other and said, in the last 12 months, how much stress have you had? Have you had a little bit? Have you had a moderate amount or have you had enough, an absolute shed load of it? Well, you know, you can put in your comments below where you are on that scale. But it's interesting because the more, I, I, just to cut across this a second, one of the things that I talk about quite a bit is is the learning line and the life, the life development line, which it looks like this, okay? So I say that 25% of your time, you need to be learning. Okay, you need to be learning and, and educating yourself and reading and expanding your mind. Then 50% of the time, you need to be cultivating and practice whatever you've learned. And then 25% of the time, you need to be rest and reflect. So I'm resting a little bit and reflecting a little bit because we've got more time on our hands. You know, I've had to check three times what day it is. I know it's day six and I think it's, yeah, it's Wednesday. So, you know, it, it is a bit weird at the moment. But the rest and reflect has allowed me to go back into a lot of the stuff that I did mindfully and was taught mindfully to refresh and reflect and and understand some of the things that, that I'd, you know, not f maybe forgotten, but but certainly um, hadn't thought about. And one of the things is in a mindfulness course, they teach you how to change your reaction and your mind to stress. Um, and we're told all the time, and we've all, we all do it, that stress is your enemy. Stress makes you sick. Stress... You know, it does lower your immune system. If you believe it does a lower your immune system. And what do I mean by that? Well, going back over some of my old paperwork, I saw there was a study of 30,000 um, uh, uh, American uh, people who were followed for eight years. And at the beginning of the program, they were all asked, how much stress do you have in your life in the last year? And then the next question was, do you believe stress is harmful? And what the death records show eight years on is the people who experienced a lot of stress had a 43% increase in death. But what was even more interesting was the majority of those deaths also answered that they believed that stress was harmful. And there also other people who had experienced a lot of stress but didn't believe the stress was harmful actually had a lower death rate than most of the other categories. It's incredible, and it's scientifically proven on 30,000 people over eight years. So this isn't something we're making up. So what does this tell us? Well, I believe it tells us that stress is, is bad for us, but what, worse, what is worse for us is actually the belief that, bad, it's, that the stress itself is bad for us. You know, I've been telling people, you know, for a long time that stress is bad for our health. So how can we change how our mind and how we react to stress to, to, to change our body so as to be able to cope with it more? And there's, you know, if you can imagine yourself in a stressful situation, what happens? You know, if I said to you now, right, you're in front of 100 people, you've got to count from 999 backwards, 
in increments of eight. Um, and if you get it wrong, you've got to start all over again and 100 people are watching and go, you've got to do it now faster, faster. You know, you'd start to, you'd make mistakes and, and you start to get stressed. And in the end, you'd probably say, I can't do this. And the signs of anxiety and all the stress would kick in. But how about thinking another way around this? How about thinking that when we do become stressed and we don't want more stress in our lives and if we can be, live our lives you know with more uh, you know um, surround ourselves with people that, that are conducive to our value system you know and and practice mindfulness and just be a little less stressed it's great that, that's not a problem but we know when we put our hands up in the last 12 months how much stress we've all had and how much stress are we having right now but if you think about stress as a mechanism for us to be able to survive and thrive for us to be able to complete the tasks that are in front of us and actually your heart beating faster the feeling of you know uh you know adrenaline flowing and sweat if you think of those mechanisms of actually being there for you to be able to survive and thrive and move forward and complete the tasks in front of you and change our response mechanism to stress actually stress is the reaction to stress is helpful because we want to be able to complete in difficult circumstances, and then things will change. People say to me, you know, I, I do a lot of um, spiritual work and mediumship, and they say, oh, you know, I'm so nervous before I, I, I do a church service, or I'm so nervous. And I turn around to them and say, the day you're not nervous, give up. Because, you see, sometimes nerves and stress is because we care. We get stressed because we care. Because we get stressed, because we care, and we can't do something about it. So we're trying to do something about it. So our body goes into this whole stress setup, and then we go, oh, it's terrible. And our reaction to it is bad. So what happens if we think about stress as actually being there to help us? When, when we get stressed, like we get, our breathing gets fast, or you know, our heart starts pounding, thinking of it, is, it's, it's helpful. We're getting ready to complete a task under duress, or to complete a task that is, that is out of our comfort zone, that we're going to complete a task that we care about. We can change how our body responds to stress by thinking about it differently. And how we think about stress really does matter. We can get rid of stress. We can learn to, you know, sorry, we can't get rid of stress. We can lessen the stress. But at the end of the day, we live in a world, and we said yesterday, the world isn't perfect and, and not being normal is normal. And, it, and it's okay to, you know, to, to have bad days and let it pass. It's our reaction to it is the matters. So next time our heart starts you know, our body starts getting stressed, beating heart, faster breathing, think this is good. Our body's getting ready to help us complete things, to help us survive and to help us thrive. But more importantly than that, when I actually started reading back over my mindfulness, I remembered oxytocin. And oxytocin is, 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 a, is a chemical in our body, and they call it the cuddle hormone, because oxytocin fine-tunes your brain for social interaction and instincts, and it makes you crave physical contact and strengthens your empathy. So if you are in isolation at the moment, your body may be producing lots of oxytocin because it's craving that social impact. But also realize that oxytocin, when you feel this craving to, to cuddle somebody or to be with somebody or have that sh social interaction, oxytocin is really good for you. Because what it does is it keeps the dilation of your, your blood vessels um, to, a, to a decent size. And that allows the blood to flow and it helps your heart. And oxytocin in your heart actually can repair stress damage. It's, it's interesting though that oxytocin is only secreted. It's a stress hormone. It's as much a part of our stress um, um, system as adrenaline and adrenaline makes us breathe faster and our heart beats so as we can get into that higher performance it's there though to nudge us to get support so when you are stressed oxytocin floods into your body to go and speak to somebody to get support to get help but also oxytocin is released when you help somebody so it's there for you to get help and it's there for you when you give help and it acts on your brain and body and it's there to help protect your cardiovascular system. And especially in times of stress. And in particular, your heart and oxytocin heals the heart from stress damage. So when you reach out when you're stressed or you reach out to someone who is stressed, you release oxytocin. It's human connection. 
So you can see where this is going. I'm talking about if you get stressed, accept the fact that your body is going into this stress mechanism to help you get through your current situation. And we can breathe it through, we can accept it, we can acknowledge it, and we can let it go. But also understand that you're now producing oxytocin. And oxytocin is there for you to pick the phone up and speak to somebody. Or if you know of somebody who is stressed, and that stress is you, that releases oxytocin, then you can contact that person to give them a hand. If you're having a difficult time, reach out to someone. If you, if you know somebody who's having a bad time, reach out to somebody. But let's think about how we deal with stress and how we see it. You know, it's there to help. It's not there to kill us. And caring creates resilience. And especially at times of stress, when we choose to view our stress response as helpful, we can build our resilience. And when we're there to help others, we can truly build our hearts. And on times of stress, it gives us access to oxytocin. To be able to help ourselves and to help others. And believe me, we don't want any more stress, but let's get better at stress. And you can trust yourself to handle all of your life's challenges. And you don't have to face them alone. There can be a positive long-term response through oxytocin. But reach out for somebody. And even if you are alone, you feel you're really alone, you're not. Reach upstairs, sit, be, and be with God. You know, just have those times. You never, you, I say before, you may feel lonely, but you're never alone. And another thing is, we talk about our lives. Go after what creates meaning in your life and trust you can handle the stress as a plus and not a negative. And finally, I just want you to, before we go into the loving kindness, but there's a, there's a bit again in reading through my book. It talks about uh, a very short mindfulness practice and it's called STOP. And it's an acronym and the word S means STOP. So at some times today when you're getting stressed or you're, whatever the scenario is, just stop. Just stop. And T stands for take a breath, mindfully. So when we stop, take a deep breath in. O means observe. Or notice what's happening right now when you take that deep breath in, when you stopped, when you come off autopilot. When you stop, you, pour, you, you, you take a breath, you observe and you notice. What feelings am I having? What emotions are arising? And you acknowledge them and you accept them and you just let them go. And if you feel stressed, you know your body's trying to help you to overcome the challenges that you have today. Feel the oxytocin releasing in your body. If you're really stressed, reach out for somebody. Or if you're stressed because you know somebody who's stressed, reach out to them. And P is for proceed. Go with awareness and loving kindness for yourself and for others go forward with awareness be aware of everything around you the sounds the sounds smells the, the everything but do it with kindness to yourself and to others i hope that helps on day six we're now going to go into the loving kindness and then we'll come back afterwards to say goodbye thank you so i want you to close your eyes i'm going to put a nice image up but I'm going to sound a bell for us to start. And all I want you to do now is focus on your breath. Breathing in. And breathing out. Breathing in. And breathing out. And just focus on where your breath is. Where do you feel it most? Is it through your nostrils? Is it on your t-shirt? Is it on your jumper? Where do you feel? Do you feel your, your belly moving in and out? Breathing in and breathing out. And to start this, we're going to offer loving kindness to ourselves. And I want you to focus on the intention of these words. 
And I want you to continually repeat these words. And if you have a thought that comes in, you welcome it, you love it, you let it go, and you come back to the mantra. So as we're breathing in, I want you to say these words. Breathing in, may I be safe. Breathing out. Breathing in, may I be happy. Breathing out. Breathing in, may I be healthy. Breathing out. Breathing in, may I live with ease. Breathing out. Repeat the mantra. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Continue that mantra as you're breathing in and you're breathing out. And if you have any thoughts that come in, you welcome them, you love them, you let them go, and you come back to your mantra. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. May I be safe, may I be happy, may I be healthy, may I live with ease. Welcome this beautiful love into your life, to be kind to yourself, to connect in with yourself, to love yourself, to heal yourself. May I be safe, may I be happy, may I be healthy. May I live with ease. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Now what I'd like you to do is just, with your eyes closed, choose someone in your life that you love or someone that inspires you, someone you think about, who you're grateful for. And I want you to picture that person in your mind. And on this occasion, as you're breathing in, you say simply, may you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. This is loving kindness for somebody else who is Someone you love, someone inspires you, put them in your mind, see them and set the intention of may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. And don't forget, if you have a thought, just let it welcome in. Hold it. Don't put any judgment on it. Accept it, acknowledge it, let it go and come back to your mantra for this person that you love. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. May you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. And may you live with ease. Now the focus, we're going to focus on someone you know who's having a difficult time at the moment, maybe someone who's ill, and we're going to offer them kindness. So if there's somebody you know who is in self-isolation or isn't feeling very well at the moment, I want you to place their, your intention in your mind, with them in your mind, and you say again, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. This is somebody who you know who's having a difficult time at the moment, who may be ill. Set the intention of that person, put them in your mind's eye. And as you do, you say to yourself, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. And if you find your attention or your mind wanders, don't worry. Just love it, let it go, and return back to your phrases, your mantra. 
May you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. These mantras are now your anchor. May you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. And what I'd like you to do is choose someone in your life that you might have difficulty with or have some tension with or have had an issue with or something that hasn't sat right between the both of you for a little bit of time. This one can be difficult, but we set the attention and we put them in our mind's eye and we say to them in our mantra, breathing in and breathing out, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. And again, if something, a thought comes in, I want you to allow it in, accept it, acknowledge it, put no judgment, love it and let it go and come back to your anchor, your mantra. For the person who you may have had difficulty with, have had an argument with, there's some tension between you. Set the attention, put them in your mind's eye and say, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. And if at any point you find that difficult, then you can just direct it back to yourself. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Now I'd like you at this moment to direct your loving kindness, your attention and your intention to all forms of life, people, animals, all beings, those people who need it most all over the world at this very difficult time. And I want you to say for them, may all beings be safe. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings live with ease. Breathing in, and breathing out. And again, if you have any thoughts, you let them in, you let them go, and off you go. May all beings be safe. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be live with ease. May all beings be safe. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings live with ease. Take a deep breath in and as you do, I just want you to slowly just recenter yourself on the chair and get your sense of awareness and feel your twiggle your fingers or, or move your toes and come back into the room and open your eyes. So we're nearly at the end of day six. I hope you're well. Please, as I always say, share this video, comment below, tell me how you're getting on. You know, as I said, let's release some oxytocin and reach out and talk to me um, and I'll release some oxytocin by talking back to you. Um, and don't forget, Hand on your heart today, day six. Good morning, Julian. I love you. Good morning, Julian. I love you. God bless you all. Stay safe. Stay, uh, stay, you know, just stay. Just be in the moment, be in the present and realize that everything will pass and we will get, you know, we will come out of the side of this much stronger, much healthier, much wiser, much, much everything. And we'll understand the true values of where we are at the moment because the value system that's in this world is changing dramatically. Minimum amount of losses, maximum amount of impact. God bless you. Take care. And as I said, please share, subscribe, and importantly, let's release some oxytocin and comment below. Reach out and I'll reach back. And if you see other people's comments, then please feel free to reach out to them. 
Thank you very much. Be love and give love. Take care. And I'll see you tomorrow on day seven. Thank you.